morning, my name is Colleen. Um, I will be presenting you a case of O.G. Simpson. Um, in early June of 1994, Orthel, Orthel James Simpson, a former NFL star and multi-talented personality, murdered his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her close friend, Ronald Goldman. Later, Mr. Simpson was arrested and taken to trial. I will be discussing why Orthel James Simpson is guilty uh, for his murders and Nicole, uh, uh, guilties for the murders of Nicole Brown Simpson and Mr. Goldman. I will be showing you how Mr. Simpson had an abusive past prior to the murder, how he had led California Highway Patrol into a pursuit, and how he invested in millions of dollars to build the dream team. Mr. Simpson had been dealing with issues that led him into an, a, an unstable state of mind. This began when, when Nicole filed for divorce. In an article by M.D. Dale Archer titled Inside the Mind of O.J. Simpson, he stated Nicole, Nicole kept a diary describing the anger, the kicking, the hitting, the fighting. He wrote, she wrote that, that she was extremely frightened and that he, ha he would carry out his threats to kill her and that he had became a monster. Yet nothing was done and he had continued to, to stalk and harass her whenever he got the chance. This proves that the behavior of Mr. Simpson's life was a threatening, threatening in, a, in a personal life he had with his wife. In another article written by Keith B. Noble, he wrote an article titled, Prosecution Says Simpson's Abused, abused, wife, abused wife for 17 Years. He explained that there was, there was clearly evidence that was an abusive person, person for 17 years. Not only did, did the defendant verbally abuse, physically abuse, dis, disgrace and humiliate Nicole through her relationship, but stalk and harass her as well. He was, an he was an abuser of the worst kind, and that led him to be abusive to her. Um, um, so, Mr. Simpson, oh, um, my next point, Mr. Simpson, uh, white Bronco chase with how California Highway Patrol was one of the most historical moments on national television. He was asked to su surrender for the murder of his ex-wife and her friend, and in place of doing so, he led the authorities on a crazy chase across LA freeways that was aired live around the world. Let me ask you something. In an honest person, would an honest person that didn't commit the crime really run away from authorities? If you really had nothing to hide, an honest person with, would question everything from the start and not only be honest with the authorities, but also be honest about everything and everything from the beginning. He had wanted to make people believe that he was an honest person who didn't murder Nicole and Ronald when really running away would made it more obvious. And my third point, from for the trial of the century, Mr. Simpson had a most extensive legal team behind him, intentionally led by Robert Shapiro and subsequently directed by Johnny Crocker. In the recent article released by NBC News back in 2016, Shapiro told Fox News anchor Megyn Kelly, I tried on the glove. It, it was a little bit wide in my palm and a little bit long in my fingers. OJ had enough Enormous, had enormous hands and I knew that the glove would not fit him. No questions about it. I wouldn't, wouldn't even be close. Robert Shapiro admits to trying on the infamous glove and he knew that it would not fit Mr. Simpson. He took a piece of evidence and manipulated it to his knowledge just to cover up OJ. How could someone, how could someone who, re, who secretly didn't act like this behind the court's back prove that he was innocent? Um, O.J. Simpson was, as we all know, was a not guilty man, as a not guilty man for the murder of his ex-wife and Miss, uh, and Nicole, well, his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her close friend Ronald Goldman. He was shown to have mentally unstable, instability, creating a lot of fear in Nicole and her personal life. He created one of the most historic pursuits of all time, 
starting at the in the Orange County area and ending in his Brentwood home located in Los Angeles. And the most more memorable thing he could have ever done was create the team of a lifetime known as the Dream Team. Orthel James Simpson was a guilty man, guilty for the murder of his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ronald Golden. All right, well, a couple of solid things first. The propositions clearly identified. There is a preview of the supporting structure. The secondary claims aren't always phrased as claims. They sometimes seem like they are topic areas and you need to make a more complete statement. So for instance, uh, when you're talking about this, you could say his abusive past shows that he was inclined to commit the crime. The car chase shows that he was, uh, had consciousness of guilt. Uh, the fact that he hired an elaborate um, defense team indicates that he needed to have a legal strategy rather than a factual strategy. Something like that. So in other words, the points that you're making are organized, but they aren't necessarily stated as claims. We're going to have, we're gonna have to figure out what the inferences are on a couple of these points, and you need to be a little more uh, specific about that. The first point, I think, was the one that you were clearest on, uh, that there's a history of abuse in the long-term relationship that he had with his wife, uh, that that abusive pattern, in essence, uh, explains what his reason for having killed her might be. Um, that, I think, is all... Uh, pretty well explained and you've actually got some good information that documents that. You've got a couple of sources that you cite including uh, some data, data from the prosecution or their conclusions on these sorts of things. So I think that you did an okay job on that. Uh, the, the Bronco chase, uh, I think it's, you basically turn it into a question. Would an innocent person have run away? And Although most of us would probably answer no, I'm not sure that running automatically uh, proves uh, guilt. It might be an indicator of guilt, but I'm not sure how confident we would be of that. Uh, when it, I don't even know if that was used as a uh, line of argument in the criminal justice trial on that particular point. I, it seems to me like it would have been, but I, you know, my memory of it is a little fuzzy here 24 years later. Um, the third point I think is a little bit problematic because the way you present it, it's like anytime somebody hires a competent <coughs> attorney, they're guilty. And I don't think that that's a fair inference to be drawing here. You, and I, we talked about this a little bit, you, you are suggesting that Shapiro manipulated the evidence. It sounds to me like he simply examined the evidence and reached the conclusion that this evidence suggests that OJ didn't commit the crime. What's the difference between him doing that and the prosecution uh, having the gloves and say, well, the gloves fit OJ, so he must have committed the crime. It's information. Uh, Shapiro didn't say, I sewed the gloves closed so his fingers wouldn't fit in it. He said, I knew that they weren't going to fit and that that was an indication of uh, OJ's innocence. The way you've interpreted it is not clear to me. I still don't understand what is problematic about that. So the strongest argument that you have for OJ's guilt is the first point. Uh, the second point um, is indicative, although I'm not sure that it's particularly strong. There's not much evidence to go along with it except the event that happened. And the third point seems like it's going the exact opposite direction. You're, you're using the fact that the, pro that the defense had uh, information that suggested OJ wasn't guilty as proof that he must have been guilty because they were doing something wrong. And I don't understand that at all. That's confusing to me. All right. Thank you.